you, Steve Landy, Manchester Trade. I don't know who else is in the room, but we're participating in Brexit, where Britain actually joined the community and I was fortunate to be part of that negotiation. The newspapers generally, or the media generally describes three options. You've covered two, the off the cliff, continuing negotiation, but the third always is the changing the mind option, the possibility of either a referendum or a new election, and the simple result because uh, the other uh, side was not a binding one. Uh, no one has really talked about the third one, which I personally believe has a much better chance the more we get in this quagmire that people are going to say, hey, let's just rethink this whole theory and so on. So I'd be very interested in two parts. One, your own view as to whether this is a possibility, 10%, 50%, 80%, and then two, what I really have found lacking, and this is uh, to Marjorie, is the actual <coughs> in real US uh, private sector view. That when the, after the plebiscite took place, as you know, President Trump thought it was a great idea, and then the guy went into the White House and all that other jazz, the private sector really didn't like that idea. You point to the 80% vote, the 80% poll. But today, I think, it may make some sense for the private sector to come out with a very strong position, again, focusing maybe changing mind or allowing the British to change their mind or something that at least gives some direction to the USG as far as how it approaches the issue. The solution is not to focus on a uh, free trade agreement with the UK, which seems to be where the USG is focusing now. Thank you. So I'll try to take the, the second referendum or the people's vote uh, question. It's certainly a possibility. I'm not even brave enough to give it odds. My understanding is it does not enjoy a majority view in the House of Commons. It would require that. Um, and um, so it's unclear to me. It's certainly a possibility. The Labor Party has recently gotten behind it, sort of. Um, and I just think that's it's out there. I think certainly over the last several days, we are in such uncharted political territory now, which you're starting to hear now, sort of does a new election in some ways do what the second referendum would do? Do we need that clarity, that new path? Because um, what's gonna be so interesting for me today, because it's a free vote for the Conservative Party and, and labor itself has, has managed unity the next couple of votes really start showing that the parties can't maintain uh, unity, that this now starts to scramble. And of course, it's been for all of us, whether you <coughs> believe Prime Minister May is a hero for walking through this path, or that she has just utterly, from the beginning, her strategy has just been failure, and we keep sticking to that failure, but both listening to her uh, in the House of Commons with their four voice, you just feel that this is a spent political force. Mm -hmm. And it's just, for me, it's unclear where we go, but of course, the Conservative Party's not gonna be able to change uh, the leadership until the end of this year. They tried that unsuccessfully last year. But the only way you do that is a new election. You'd have to have, through the Fixed Parliament Act, a, a House of a two-thirds majority to do that, and that's difficult to do. So you just feel like you're, this is really a stuck moment politically. I think the key is we start having the House of Commons do indicative votes so we can start to see, which an argument should have happened a long time ago, to start seeing where there was the political support, where is it, and then to try to build the, 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 the agreement around where there was some majority support for it. Rather, in my view, the withdrawal agreement, uh, the red lines, the multiple red lines that were uh, put forward over the last several years was about maintaining conservative party <coughs> unity and cohesiveness, but did not take into account when the security <coughs> process had to be met by the majority. So, uh, highly complex, who knows, buckle in, uh, it's going to be an extraordinary moment for British politics and British history. Why don't you take the second half? Sure. Um, I I wouldn't, I'm like Heather, I wouldn't ascribe, um, I wouldn't put odds on um, any one of these outcomes because nobody, anybody who says they know what's gonna happen really doesn't know what they're talking about because they really, because nobody knows. Um, I do think, as she said, as Heather said, the, the idea of a second referendum is uh, extraordinarily complicated because, I mean, for both parties, even though the Labor Party has nominally taken on uh, the idea, uh, because nobody knows what the outcome would be. 
right? Um, one could argue maybe ditto for a general election. I think the challenge with the general election is uh, it's not really clear who would step up uh, in the Tory party. I mean, there are definitely some pretenders to the proverbial throne, but it's not necessarily clear that any one of them could uh, find a way out of this political morass. I think Heather's right, the series of indicative votes um, could be um, uh, very useful, although I, I'm not convinced that you will find necessarily uh, a majority for any one way forward, which is what makes this uh, at once so scary and so interesting. In terms of the role of the American business community, I mean, uh, look, this was, right, it was a sovereign decision uh, taken by the British people, and so um, American companies uh, opted to find a way to uh, respect that decision and just really focus on the practical implications of what a UK departure would mean. In terms of uh, weighing in with our own government, I mean, this is part of why we set up this council. Um, you know, I, I think, to Heather's point, the idea of having the US sort of at the table even quiet, or not at the table, but in the background, even quietly trying to kind of offer some, uh, if not guidance, at least toss out some ideas about how this could go forward. I mean, we that's something that didn't happen. And it's, you know, we can't kind of go back and, and, and undo that. Could, could the business community have been more forward-leaning uh, in terms of encouraging uh, the administration to do that? Mm, maybe, but I guess, frankly, a lot of folks in the private sector kind of thought, wait a minute, so they've made this decision, but there's got to be a way to undo this, right? Uh, so I think there was a little bit of denial up front. Um, in terms of of, of the way forward, I mean, look, we're going to have to, assume, again, assuming the UK leaves, we're going to have to negotiate some sort of a relationship between the US and UK, whether you call it an FTA or you call it something else. Um, and so I think when the time is right for that, we will focus on uh, what, what the terms of that negotiation will need to be. I, I agree with you. There is, uh, we have a bit of a challenge because this administration uh, appears to be placing a bit greater emphasis on uh, doing a deal with the UK as compared to doing a deal with the EU. Uh, I would argue that both of those things need to proceed. Um, uh, one, is, uh, one is not more important than the other. Frankly, both are necessary. Um, and I, you know, the business community is, is basically making that point and will continue to make that point. Um, but I, I, I think, just practically speaking, um, there is a limit to what business can reasonably be expected to do, uh, especially when you're talking about decisions made by another sovereign. <coughs> and being respectful of everybody's time, and to end on a positive note, the sun is shining. It's Wednesday in Washington. The sun rose. The sun rose. There is plenty on the trade agenda, so go to weeda.org to sign up for the next incredibly insightful discussion. And thanks to Ken and the amazing team here at WIDA, especially thanks to our phenomenal panel for helping us make sense. Ish. Uh, thank you all. Look forward to seeing you at future events. Thanks, Lisa, for moderating our discussion today.